Well, welcome to Age Friendly here on Shaw Spotlight. I'm Rebecca Johnson, your host. And one of the things that we've been doing the last few months that we've had our program here on Shaw Spotlight is, is to talk about age friendly. And, and tonight, we're, or today in our program, this month, we're going to find out a little bit about the organization itself here in Thunder Bay, uh, when it started, who's involved, how you might want to get in, involved yourself, and what they're planning to do as they move forward with their organization. So for the next half hour, our, our guest this, this today is our, the president of the organization, Randy Moore. And Randy, I think one of the things I'd like to start off with uh, as we're having this conversation for the next period of time is, is what and, and who is age friendly? Okay. Well, thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> Um, for those of you who may not know, Rebecca would be one individual who would know even more about it than I am because she was one of the founders of Age Friendly Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Age Friendly Thunder Bay is, uh, I guess it's best described as a community-based stakeholder group uh, advocating for seniors' independence uh, and quality of life in Thunder Bay. Age Friendly Thunder Bay attempts to, uh, attempts to uh, uh, help citizens in Thunder Bay age with dignity, and, uh, and it's a community that's recognized by the World Health Organization uh, and their global network of age-friendly cities. So we'll talk a bit more about, about that. Yeah, so how did the one, I mean, I, 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 I definitely will tell you that I was involved at the start, but irregardless of that, Randy, I'm in inviting you to tell uh, the community, and particularly the older adults that are watching our program today, is, is what... How did it actually get started here in Thunder Bay? Sure. The, global, the World Health Organization actually, uh, in 2002, uh, was in discussions with uh, many uh, countries across the world. And in response to what uh, many people call the silver tsunami, uh, the number of aging mm -hmm. baby boomers every country in the world has faced, um, they decided to create a policy framework that kind of enhanced discussions and kind of pushed the possibility of planning uh, and, uh, and just kind of created an environment where people could discuss what's going to happen and how to prepare for the, uh, the coming aging group. And, and so here in Thunder Bay, did we do that? or I, Well, I know it was done through the university, so let's talk a little bit about that, sure. how that happened. Sure. Well, in 2007... Mm -hmm. the, the World Health Organization then, after years of, of doing research, created a, a, a kind of a, a, a booklet called the uh, Global Age-Friendly Cities Guide. Mm -hmm. And in that, they identified, through all of the research, uh, eight pillars that was a concern to people worldwide right. as they were aging. And in it, they created a, kind of a guide for communities to analyze and take a look at, at, at these pillars, take a look at their own communities, and decide where do we stand in preparation for the increase in seniors' population. Thunder Bay, in uh, late 2008, early 2009, uh, decided to get on board, and that's actually quite early. We were one of the early communities in this country. And um, uh, it was actually led by a few key community partners, you being one of them, mm -hmm. Lakehead University was very involved at the start as well. Their Center for Education and Research on Aging and Health, which by acronym spells SARA, so uh, quite often we'll, we'll hear, hear people refer to Lakehead University SARA. That's their the department. And, uh, and their group, which was led back then by Dr. Mary Lou Kelly, who was very involved and uh, very mm -hmm. concerned about, about the upcoming issues. So Lakehead University took it upon themselves uh, with uh, other community partners to do a series of meetings, surveys, uh, and over a series of months, put together the results. And uh, in April 2010, mm -hmm. uh, the steering committee on behalf of Lakehead University and the, and the group that had been meeting uh, was able to put together, put forth a plan to the World Health Organization stating, here's Thunder Bay, here's where we are, here's the steps that we plan on taking to qualify as a, an age-friendly community. 
And actually, Thunder Bay was one of the first age-friendly communities in the country, let alone the province. I mean, I know we were second in the province, and we only got beat out by London. But however, uh, <laughs> that that's significant that we wear, like you mentioned earlier, uh, on the you know on the edge of of making something change here in Thunder Bay for seniors. Absolutely, and you know one of the things that I'm most proud of with even the board today. But when you look back at all the people that have been involved over the years. We've had an abnormally passionate group of people that have been involved with Age Friendly since the very start. And that's allowed this organization to flourish. It's allowed the organization to grow, to achieve a number of very unique things. Mm -hmm. uh, Age Friendly Thunder Bay, even to this day, I believe, is still a national leader in the Age Friendly movement. And uh, there's an awful lot that we can be very proud of with this, with this group. One of the things you mentioned, Randy, is the fact that uh, we are growing demographic, like as older adults, seniors. Uh, this, is, this is happening here in Thunder Bay. This is the, grow the largest growing demographic. Well, absolutely. Um, back when we started, mm -hmm. uh, in 2011, there was a survey done in the city of Thunder Bay that stated that approximately 24% of the population was age 60 and older, uh, and that they estimate by the year 2035, so we're kind of halfway there, uh, by 2035 they estimate that population will be about 45% of Thunder Bay, 60 and older. So again, it's almost the majority of people by within the next 10 years. And that is, that's significant. So we need to adapt <clears throat> and, and, and have age friendly as well as the community recognize that we have more and more uh, older adults and what are we gonna do to, to develop programs or whatever to accommodate that population? Absolutely. It's been a concern since the very start. Yeah. And um, again, uh, like so many other organizations, you can't tackle the world in one shot. Mm -hmm. Um, what we have done is we have chosen small bites that we have taken and uh, we've been very successful throughout, throughout the years. Uh, even going back to uh, the development of our senior charter in the community. Uh, we were one of the first communities in this country to develop a senior's charter, which if anyone is interested, um, it's actually framed and at City Hall, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, that's fabulous. And that's, uh, that's, that's something to be recognized for, that we have a senior charter in our community. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And, and then we'd started to develop a number of other things. One of the, one of the early tasks or early projects that we'd taken on uh, was something that we ended up calling the Business Toolkit. Okay, we're going to stop on that for a minute because okay. we're out of time for right now. We're going to have a short break, come back, and we're going to talk about the business toolkit and many of the other activities that have happened since Age Friendly started. Well, welcome back, and we're looking at Age Friendly in our program this month. And one of the things that's really important is to find out what Age Friendly is about and all the rest of it. And Randy Moore, president of the organization of Age Friendly Thunder Bay is my guest. And we, we ended the last segment with the business guide. You have so many activities uh, going on now, Randy, with regarding the, the organization, but let's start off with the business guide. What is that? Sure, the business guide, business toolkit yeah. was, uh, was a real success for us at the start. And what, what we had done is we had actually developed a, a survey to be uh, used by a number of local businesses. And uh, what it did was it went through the business, the organization, the customer service, mm -hmm. the, the, how the, the aisles were set up to make sure there was plenty of room. And it basically allowed a company to really analyze if they were age friendly, if they were able to, you know, uh, support an individual with a walker mm -hmm. or a wheelchair and whether they had proper devices for people that were hearing impaired and they were prepared to deal with all that. And uh, so that survey went out to uh, uh, so many businesses in the community and we, we believe it made some very positive... Uh, Change. Positive changes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was successful and a number of other age-friendly organizations throughout the country have actually used that as a guide to uh, create something similar to themselves. So again, we were a leader in that. Right. One of the things that happened from that, Randy, was the fact that you went on a to a national, or was it an international, anyway, conference to talk about that business guide. Yeah, you and I both went. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, a lovely lady from Lakehead University, Ruth Wilford, the three right. of us went and presented. It was an international conference. 
I remember because I, I met a, a group of people drinking Guinness and from Ireland, and they were, <laughs> they were there as well. But it was a, it was a great conference. Uh, I learned so much about Age Friendly and how it's such a massive movement worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes when you start some of these locally, you can develop a very uh, um, kind of narrow view, narrow focus. And when you do realize that there's so many people involved worldwide, you do start to feel like you're a part of something and that right. you want to push forward even further. So we did, you did that in regards to uh, setting up a business guide and, and that, that did help, definitely uh, helping uh, businesses so they could, uh, uh, whether you went with font size on signs and things like Absolutely, that, yeah. that was really important. But one of the other things that, that you've done recently is a resource guide. So can you explain a little bit about that? So the resource guide is, of course, something that, that has been bantered back and forth and been available in the city for a number of years. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that the resource guide, which lists uh, uh, all of the resources available to the senior population yeah. in this community, but the problem is it's always printed, and the day it's printed is the day that it becomes old mm -hmm. and out of date. And um, uh, so we tried to decide how can we move forward past that. We updated the guide. It took a number of people, a lot of hours, but we updated the resource guide with all current information. We did print them out because people love to have their mm -hmm. copy by the phone, things like that. But that resource guide is also on our website, Age Friendly Thunder Bay, and it's updated on a regular basis. And people can actually go to the website, go to the resource guide, print out a page, print out a number of pages for themselves, the, for, particularly for items that they're interested in. Right. And that alone has uh, uh, kind of removed the, the issue of being out of date. And that is a, a significant issue. So it's, it's been a huge success for us. And that has everything from health to programming for, from health care to, to uh, activities that you want to get involved in in the community. Like it's a huge resource for the older population. Oh, absolutely. Health services, yeah. transportation. It has a listing of, of everyone in the community that uh, the senior population would need to focus on. One of the things also, Randy, is the fact that you, um, you have, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, an award, and I know you've put it in my name, which I thank you very kindly for, but there is an award that, that is honored, honors people every year. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, as you said, mm -hmm. um, because of your years of work, we had decided to name it the Rebecca Johnson right. Age-Friendly Senior Award. And uh, this year, we're, we're proud to be giving out our fifth award mm -hmm. and it's uh, really meant for individuals that have shown years of valued service and community commitment uh, through volunteering mm -hmm. and we get uh, quite a, a large number of applicants each year and for anyone who would be interested we receive applications up until mid-September at where the decision is made for the for the new year right. and the award is given out at our annual general meeting each October. And so you'll be having that annual meeting shortly. Yes, the yes. annual meeting is in the next week. Right. So the thing is, if if Pete, well, we'll get into that in our third segment. But the other thing that you have is working groups that, that work on different components that deal with uh, activities related to older adults. Absolutely. Yeah. And and uh, you know, a lot of what we've talked about has been work done by our board, done by people involved in yeah. the inner circle, but. The key part about having an age-friendly committee and a successful group is that you have to have community involvement. And our working groups are ways that people from the community can get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're focusing on, through a series of surveys that we had done, um, really focusing on the pillars that we feel are most, uh, most needed and, and most our, our biggest concerns in the community. So things like um, aging at home, mm -hmm. uh, social isolation, uh, right. Transportation um, and elder you know, abuse and elder abuse, of course. We're just starting that. That's How can I new, forget that one? That's yeah. a new program. Absolutely, right. and uh, we're we're not thrilled that we have the group because it's sad that we actually have to have the group. Right. But it's a very valuable, very valuable group with uh, some very committed individuals in this community, and uh, we think there's going to be some great work being done out of them. <clears throat> so, if I was a sitting here watching this program today, how would I want, how could I get involved and, and say, I'd like to be part of the transportation group because I'm not happy with something that's going on with city transit or whatever it is. How do I, how do I get involved? 
Again, I refer to the city through, sorry, yeah. the Age Friendly Thunder Bay website, right. uh, where you can actually uh, fill out a volunteer form. You can also uh, reach out to any of our any of our board. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll quite often, uh, if you go to the website, you'll see the list of all of our board members, and uh, uh, or you can uh, come to one of our uh, steering committee meetings, which is held quarterly, and uh, there's lots of information given, and uh, mm -hmm. just ask to participate. And there's always a spot for anyone in this community who wants to participate and provide some information. And you have a board of directors. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, we do. Board of directors, uh, we have 10 board and uh, a past chair, mm -hmm. being you. Mm -hmm. um, and again, an incredibly passionate group of people um, from a diverse a series of organizations throughout the community. Yeah. And, and so, and if you want to get to that level, that's something that you can certainly uh, look at doing. Absolutely. Everybody is, can be as committed as they want. Um, and so that is a very good thing to end this segment on. And we're going to bring Randy um, Moore back again uh, to talk to us again about the future and what is happening in the future for Age Friendly here in Thunder Bay. Well, welcome back to Age Friendly Thunder Bay. Our guest today is, is uh, Randy Moore, who is the president of Age Friendly here in Thunder Bay. And Randy, we've talked a little bit about the history and how it got started, a little bit some of the things that are going on and, and some of the highlights. But where are you going in the future in regards to strategic planning, for example? I mean, now you've got the organization. It's been in existence for 13 years. So what's happening now? Yeah, it's a great question, Rebecca. And that's always the key question with any organization is where, where do you move moving forward right um, so a key part to anything that we do is community involvement um, no matter what we do no matter what we say we're going to do I always say to everyone that I meet on the streets we want to hear from you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because nothing we do is ever cut in stone we want community input um, one of the things that happened in the last uh, last year or so is that uh, we received some additional funding and have revisited our strategic plan and uh, uh, did a, an incredibly thorough uh, uh, revisiting of the strategic plan where we ended up coming up with 26 items that need to be uh, reviewed and assessed in this community. And uh, th there's so many things that need to be done that we are focusing on, on 13 elements. Um, I had to actually. I, write I, it down. I need you to to tell us what some of those are. Sure, are. absolutely, and I have yeah. to read it. Um, explore and expand subsidized or free transportation options. So that's something that we have been trying to discuss with mm -hmm. the City of Thunder Bay and looking for input from the community, but uh, potentially offering discounted or uh, even free transportation for um, older for adults. For older adults, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, provide system navigation to assist older adults to access all the benefits and services to which they are eligible. And when we talk about system navigation, quite often, you know, somebody will be sitting down and they'll decide, okay, I need assistance. Where do I go? Right. Who do I turn to? System navigators are individuals who know the system and say, here's probably what you need. Mm -hmm. Let's go in this direction, right. whether it's online, whether it's physically. Um, but it's a real need in this community. Um, and, and so many more. Explore and develop opportunities for the delivery of food hampers. Explore and develop opportunities for subsidized or free foot care, which is a big issue in this community. Explore and develop strategies for falls prevention, which, again... That's huge. It's a huge, major issue. We're, we're going to actually have a program on that uh, I, in the next month or so about falls, because that is a big issue Oh, absolutely. for older adults. There are so many uh, yeah. fantastic programs that assist people with, with uh, that, that potentially have some, some issues mm -hmm. with falling. And uh, uh, again, our resource guide and focusing on getting that information out, information dissemination, right? right? Um, advocate for uh, the needs of older adults who are frail, which of course, mm -hmm. again, navigating through the health system. Develop a strategy that includes providing access to devices, access to the internet, and the digital literacy skills to create more opportunities for older adults to participate or access services virtually and safely. Um, I'm doing, tomorrow I'm doing another interview with a group called uh, Cyber Seniors. Mm -hmm. And it's a group that we have gotten involved in and we are doing uh, regular webinars, uh, which 
uh, will allow people to, uh, again, view a series of different topics. And uh, through some of that programming, uh, we have a series of tablets throughout the community where people uh, who maybe have income issues um, might be able to access a tablet and uh, free online service for possibly as long as six months. There are a lot of these things that are available. And the idea behind it is that there is no reason for anyone to be isolated. Uh, and if that mm -hmm. means that your only access to the world out there is a tablet or a computer, or, you know, through the internet, right. then we want to ensure that that's available. There, we know that there are a number of um, older adults that don't have computers, uh, that are not, not on the internet. There's, there's ways, though, of communicating, and even through phone calls, that they can, can get in touch with people. It's really important because that isolation is not healthy. Absolutely not. No, isolation is one of the key factors in people's failing health. Right. Um, and sadly, as we all age, uh, our circle of family and friends does shrink. It shrinks and, without uh, question, yes. Yeah. So uh, being made aware of ways of communicating and being in touch with other individuals in the community is of extreme importance. And, and there's so many different ways that that communication can happen. So we are definitely trying to focus on that kind of item. And, and, and that's very important. So is there, there a couple more that you want to identify? I yeah, think it's important. Yeah, there's a number. Um, mm -hmm. Again, uh, develop strategies to provide culturally appropriate care and appropriate food for Indigenous older adults, which again uh, is a part of this community, a, a very strong part of this community, and we need to ensure that we can provide services in a culturally a culturally aware and mm -hmm. uh, a culturally strong uh, way where uh, they're made to feel comfortable. Right. Um, and, and again, so many others. Um, consider the, the physical build around public spaces. Uh, public spaces, of course, are one of the key elements to the uh, World Health Organization's global mm -hmm. network. And ensuring that, that uh, public spaces are accessible making sure that they're safe mm -hmm. uh, are, again, one of the key focuses because people need to be outdoors. They need to enjoy it. One of the things you mentioned about is, is in regards to accessible uh, and for older adults being able to even go outside. So we have in the city more you know, areas uh, for trails. We now have an accessible uh, playground that they can use. Uh, we need more of that because if our population is going to be 45%, uh, older adults in a few years, we need to really plan for that. Absolutely, absolutely. If we want to have a healthy aging population. Correct. which is crucial, yeah. really. Absolutely, yep. And, uh, and again, that's where age-friendly really does the work that we do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's important for us to emphasize that we're not program deliverers. Mm -hmm. We work with our community partners, over 60 community partners, right. to, you know, information dissemination to help them work uh, on the programming that they have and to advocate on their behalf. So um, that's really where, where Age Friendly gets most of its work and uh, we make our important note. If people, I think it's important to just to kind of finalize here, Randy, is if people are interested, they can definitely go on the Age Friendly website, Absolutely. which is agefriendly agefriendlythunderbay.ca. I memorized that at some yep. point in time. So that's not hard to forget, agefriendlythunderbay.ca. And you can phone the organization as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah, the phone number is on the website. I yeah. wish I could remember it off yeah. that. Um, we do have a full-time, uh, sorry, a part-time coordinator mm -hmm. uh, who's excellent. And, and again, reach out to anyone who's on the board. Uh, right. We are all passionate about it. We all want to talk about age friendly and we want everyone to be aware and get involved in this community. One of the easy ways to do for the phone number, because we can't remember it today, is just to call 211 and ask about age friendly's phone number. There you go. Easy to do that. Or go to our website and either look it up or go to our <laughs> resource guide and it's on there as well. Randy Moore, our guest this evening. And, and, and Randy, thank you so very much for coming and talking to us about the organization. And we'll see where we go from here. And finishing off, we have the next two minutes with Linda DePiro, who will provide you our senior exercise moment. So get out and get fit. I'm Linda DePiro, and today's exercise segment is going to focus on postural awareness and breathing. So first of all, let's go into a very poor posture. Of course, none of you have poor posture, right? But you have this kind of hunched shoulders, forward head nod, 
and just you can feel how it pulls on the imbalances of muscles. A simple remedy, place your finger at your sternum, lift the sternum. It places the shoulders in a beautiful condition. And if you can maintain this while you're exercising and walking, that is great. So we're gonna work on the mid back. The scapula, which is your shoulder blades, we're gonna reach forward. The thumbs are roughly about the same height as your shoulders. Keep your arms straight. Imagine that your, your back is up against a wall and you're just gonna imprint the shoulder blades into the wall and then widen as you reach forward. So uh, try to keep your arms straight because people wanna bend the elbows you want to just get. It's important to get the bones moving with the scap, okay? Protraction, retraction, elevation, depression. The other thing the scap does is upward, downward rotation. A little exercise to help strengthen is the bow and arrow. I'm just gonna do one arm. You're gonna bend your elbow, you're gonna reach it back, look at your fingertips, fold it in and reach forward. Breathe in through the nose, exhale as you pull back, reach. We're gonna do a little rotation here, up and down with the hands, that targets your rotator cuff. Inhale and exhale, bringing it in. And one more time, bend, reach, flex, tuck under. Good posture, better breathing, alleviates muscle, imbalances and stress on the joints. Not to mention, you feel taller, you feel better, and you look great.